OK, we interrupt that report to bring you breaking news this hour. Civil Guard officers are moving through crowds to get into polling stations in Catalonia. They're breaking through doors, but people inside are trying to stop them. The Catalan vote for independence from Spain started just, started just moments ago, and similar cases have been reported at different polling stations. Madrid sees this referendum as an illegal one and says its aim is to break Spanish society. Well, just days before the vote, Spanish government deployed extra, an extra 6,000 civil guard officers. They are a military force. We can now cross live to Artis Medina Cochinova, who is at the polling station where police have interrupted in Barcelona. Let's go over to her now. Medina, can you tell us the latest from where you are? Well, the situation is very uh, quickly getting out of hand, really. The situation getting more and more tense. And what's happening now is that we're still standing at this polling station that has just been open. We've got crowds of people here, and we do hear reports that around other polling stations, around schools, police are breaking in and they're pushing people out and they're preventing people from uh, voting. They're confiscating voting materials, ballots. They're trying to shut down polling stations. Uh, now, Spanish authorities consider this uh, referendum, this event, to be illegal, and they promise that they will shut down all polling stations and will take all uh, measures to really uh, stop this from going forward. Now, in terms of what's happening here, now, as you can see, people right now looking at that direction. This is where we expect to poli uh, police forces to arrive. Now, some people over here told me that in two blocks from here, there is another school and police is already there. They're breaking down doors and they're taking people out, holding them by their hair and becoming really, really very quickly, very violent. What's happening here is that they're trying to put the elderly older people closer to the doors to prevent from violence so that police that would enter the building will not push those people out. So the situation is really indeed very tense here and we expect to see uh, security services, police forces here in any minute now. We've been here since early in the morning. We've been here at 4 a.m. talking to people. We know that neighbors of this area have gathered here and stayed here overnight to protect this polling station and to let people vote. They say that they will do everything to defend their democratic rights. Now, we've been here at this uh, square, very close to the school building, from 4 a.m. this morning, talking to different people. Now, there's been a crowd of people here at night protecting the building of the school, and all of them told me one thing, that for them it is very important to have this right to vote. This country has been mobilizing for the last many years uh, just with this objective, to be able to express ourselves and to say what do we want for, for this country for the future. It doesn't matter that it's raining all night, etc., et because uh, we, we love democracy. We want to vote. We have needed to do extreme actions of such as sleeping in school, such as coming here, hundreds of persons at five o'clock in the morning standing. <laughs> I've been standing here for hours and we will be here all day if necessary because they don't want to let us speak. The atmosphere is changing really quickly over here. Now, this early morning, everything was peaceful and everyone was friendly. And now we can feel fear among the crowd. And another worrying thing is that I see a lot of children here, a lot of small children, families that came here, bringing their kids together with them, family members, elderly people. So if the situation here gets out of control as at other polling stations, the consequences of this could be very drastic. Mm. Let's touch a little bit more on uh, the people who are in that crowd there today, the, this crowd that's increasing um, um, over the hours. Uh, many of those inside these uh, polling stations, which are schools, of course, are parents with children who have remained in those buildings after the end of lessons on Friday to ensure that they would be able to uh, cast their votes today. Also, a lot of elderly people we've seen in the crowd. Now, they knew that Madrid had declared this vote illegal. They knew that extra police forces had been deployed to the area. Do you think they've been shocked by the amount of force that the riot police are using? And do you think this is going to dampen their spirits throughout the day? Or are they in it for the long haul? 
absolutely they were shocked and that's for sure they never expected such a violent approach towards their peaceful gathering towards their peaceful uh, desire to vote and to pr protect their fundamental human rights I've talked to different people here and they never expected police to use force against them against their children against their elderly people and uh, if you have a look over here we've got small children here uh, just a uh, uh, and family has just passed me by with uh, three uh, kids not less than six years old so we've got a lot of students here and the whole area is carted off now in terms of whether they're ready to stand here till the end well I believe they are because they are very determined and they spent nights protecting different school buildings so for them it is a matter of protecting their uh, democracy protecting their right to vote many told me that they're not only voting voting for or against the independence, for or against the referendum. They're just here to protect the right to vote and they want to express their opinion. Now, prior to the vote, referendum organizers did say they urged voters to uh, defend the polling stations, but they always maintained that uh, this should be a peaceful resistance to any police action. Do you think as things escalate throughout the day, we might see some more violence from the uh, the Catalonians, the people who are there to vote, or do you, do you think, having spoken to the people there, that things will remain peaceful on their part, regardless of what action the police take? Well, they are determined to remain peaceful, and they're expressing that in every single symbolic uh, gesture they can find. Uh, sometimes they do start to sing songs, or they laugh, they clap, and uh, they uh, put their hands up in the air. Uh, we've seen that before, uh, and this is a symbolic gesture showing that their hands are empty, and they're just here uh, as a peaceful movement, as a peaceful gathering uh, to vote. It is important that sometimes they do clap and to put their hands in the air just expressing that and they are determined to remain peaceful and that is why they're so shocked that police is using force against them okay that's medina kochenova in barcelona with the latest medina thanks for now we'll be back to you shortly um, with the, the latest updates thank you very much now, video has also emerged online of officers confiscating boxes and ballot papers from a catalan polling station with voters uh, with voters trying to stop them the police can be seen taking boxes away. You can hear people in the background on this video shouting and whistling at officers. A police also reportedly seized boxes and ballots in the days leading up to the referendum. Earlier, we discussed the issue with several political experts who told us the Spanish authorities are discrediting themselves. Probably was not the, um, the wisest of the, of the moves. Uh, on the other hand, um, I think that the Spanish government felt that they had to do something and they had been so adamant that they will not allowed the referendum that at this point um, they had to do they had to do something so it may have a political uh, backlash and more people would be uh, now willing to support uh, the independence of Catalonia I really do feel that anything that looks like a clamp down from national government on a regional government on democratic expression of speech and expression of views is not the way forward for any European Union member state 6,000 civil guards were deployed in the region, arriving on cruise ships chartered by the Spanish Interior Ministry. They'll be staying in Barcelona until October the 3rd. The Spanish government does have reasons to worry about losing this region, though. Catalonia covers 6% of the country's territory and accounts for 20% of Spain's GDP. The region is also responsible for more than half of investments into startups, and almost a quarter of foreign tourists choose to go to Catalonia. That's perhaps why Madrid is so desperate to stop this referendum from taking place.
three members of the former government have been judged and convicted and barred from public positions only because we let people vote. Nuestra gran fuerza son las papeletas y las urnas. Cualquier ciudadano de los que están aquí o de los que están en su casa puede imprimirse la papeleta. The roots of the Catalan crisis go way back into Spanish history. By now, you've surely heard about Catalonia's desire to go it alone. The prosperous region in northeast Spain accounts for almost a fifth of the country's economy and believes it's paying Madrid way more than it gets back. Catalonia is home to 7.5 million people, boasting its own language, culture and history, which is why many Catalans consider themselves a separate nation. But it has been a part of Spain since the 15th century, courtesy of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. For the origins of the modern cessationist movement, let's fast forward to the 20th century. Spain becomes a republic, and Catalonia gets a statute of autonomy. But six years later, Franco comes to power and takes that away. The three decades of Franco's oppression only bolstered the Catalans' desire for independence. And after his death, and Spain's transition to democracy, Catalonia got its autonomy back, but not enough, as many locals believe. When the country's constitutional court put limits on Catalan's claims to nationhood, it started a chain reaction, with protests and symbolic referendums in cities and towns across the region. Some Catalans now compare Madrid's pressure to the decades of Franco's dictatorship. The region held a non-binding independence vote back in 2014. About 80% said yes to independence, but it was declared illegal by Spain. Lo que ha ocurrido el domingo en Cataluña no ha sido una votación democrática. But Catalonia is pressing ahead regardless and seems more determined than ever to be independent. Madrid has shut down many referendum-related websites and the Spanish Civil Guard raided the Centre of Telecommunications and Information Technology in Barcelona. Well, WikiLeaks co-editor Julian Assange dubs the government's actions as the first internet war. WikiLeaks have also created a mirror of a website that helps voters to find a polling station that's open. We spoke to a member of the Catalan Pirate Party, which is also helping referendum-related websites to stay active. They are doing the right thing because it's not a matter of independence, it's a matter of democracy, it's a matter of civil rights. All rights are being repressed by the Spanish government because they are uh, prosecuting without legal order against different websites that they only host information about the referendum beyond any reasonable uh, thought uh, they have done uh, the maximum uh, except, uh, example of repression that Catalonia has seen since Franco's, Francoism. <laughs> With Spanish society divided, Europe's largely refrained from taking sides, saying it's the internal issue for Spain. Well, that's upset some people in Catalonia who accuse the EU of turning its back on the region's right to vote. At an EU media briefing this week, journalists have tried to pin down the bloc to get its view explained. Now you have a double standard in freedom of expression. One standard for Turkey, Hungary, and another standard for Catalonia. You condemn it when they shut down Cambodia daily, but you stay silent when a member state starts playing with freedom of expression. If they shut down private websites, if they start arresting journalists, how can you say this is constitutional order, we don't have anything to say? I mean, this is freedom of expression. Anything else that we can help you with today? It's an internal 
constitutional problem according to the EU and has to be solved in the framework of the internal uh, order, uh, legal order of, of Spain. Uh, the problem is uh, that uh, this is uh, true until, until when uh, certain uh, issues uh, arise, like, and this is in the last uh, few days, the issue of freedom of expression, which is not uh, only an internal constitutional issue in Spain. It's clearly uh, uh, a European value, which is, if you want, uh, part of the EU constitutional order, not only Spanish constitutional order. And as police try to uh, continue to try to stop this vote from taking place in Catalonia, our teams both here in Moscow and our correspondent in Barcelona will be updating you on the situation throughout the day. Stay with us for that. Catalonia's independence referendum is underway but has been marred by numerous scenes of violence. 337 people have now been injured in clashes with military police, according to Catalan authorities. Spanish civil guard officers have been forcing their way into polling stations across the region. The broken down doors as activists inside tried to prevent them from entering, with a number of people being dragged away. Well, these are what appear to be rubber bullets fired by police as they disperse a crowd of voters. The sound of shots can also be heard on the video. Well, Spanish police say 11 of their officers have been injured in scuffles. A Spanish government official has tweeted that police actions are professional and proportionate, but some think the videos emerging suggest otherwise. <laughs> Well, here you can see protesters in Girona in northeastern Catalonia facing off against officers. Well, demonstrators have their hands up in a sign of non-violence, but police apparently started hitting them with batons. Well, we spoke to one man who was injured in these clashes. We, we saw they would be uh, trying to, to take off us from the polling stations. We never thought that there would be such a violence from the police. They hit us badly, um, all people, kids. It's been simply unacceptable. We were singing and, and we sang no violence. We sing, we just want to vote. We, we sing, we are all friends. And they hit us with the clubs. It's been terrible. Many people crying. So the proportion, I don't know what they think it's proportion, but we, we, no one here was doing nothing else than singing and, and, and asking for our freedom of voting. They were not making any distinction at all. They were hitting everyone. They were not looking at anything. Well, another video from Catalonia shows police jumping on and violently kicking protesters, as well as dragging the activists out of a polling station. And let's bring you this footage now. It's emerged showing a Catalan policeman who is uh, seen on the right here being pushed and shoved. These are two members of the civil guard. Uh, the Catalan officer trying to calm down his civil guard colleagues, trying to protect the protesters. But, as you can see, hands were laid on. He was pushing, he was shoving, and the crowd who were watching onto that scene were visibly enraged. Jose Enric Falch, who's from the Catalan Solidarity for Independence Coalition, told us that all the violence coming from police today has been very unexpected. 
The reaction of the people is uh, that everybody here is uh, much shocked uh, about the police uh, reaction. It is the national police who acts uh, um, against the people. It is not the Catalan police. They don't show ne neither uh, an order of, uh, of procurator. They don't show neither an order of, uh, of uh, justice. They only react entering with violence and uh, taking out the, the um, ballots on the polling stations. It is, uh, it is never seen before. We could never believe that what we are suffering for democracy. It's incredible. OK, let's cross to Barcelona. We can speak live to our correspondent Medina Koch, who's been around several of the uh, polling stations there. Medina, what's the latest? Spanish Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy has just addressed the nation and here in the heart of the Catalan capital, Barcelona, right on Plaza Catalunya, uh, hundreds of people were watching his address live and they heard really some interesting things that were said. Well, first of all, uh, the Prime Minister said that there has been no referendum in Catalonia. Well, that might, uh, might come as a surprise to so many people that we've seen today standing in lines for hours and protecting their polling stations just to have the right to vote. Now, it was also said by the Prime Minister uh, that uh, he also thanked the police for their work today, and he said that Spain has set an example for the world. Now, some here on this um, square and around the city and around the region would probably disagree with uh, the Prime Minister because today we've seen some really uh, violent clashes taking place around uh, the area uh, between police forces and ordinary citizens that uh, left their houses uh, to go and vote this Sunday. And we do know that the number of injured people this Sunday has surpassed 760 people. Now, we've seen uh, police forces being real violent towards different sorts of people from students to elderly people they were pushing people out of the polling stations they were breaking windows they were breaking the doors down and they were real violent we proposed to resist without violence they could have taken us by the arms and made us stand up but they started shooting with rubber bullets and hitting us with batons grandparents children women all crying all suffering why just for wanting to vote for wanting democracy we have united and formed a barricade they detained and mistreated people only for daring to lift a paper in the hands well, this morning, people were ready to uh, gather peacefully, and they were telling us many times that for them it is very important to remain a peaceful gathering just to uh, protect their fundamental human rights. But really, throughout the day, the mood in the crowd seems to have changed. Now, we've heard reports of injured policemen as a result of scuffles between the crowds and uh, security services. People were uh, building barricades around different polling stations, not only here in Barcelona, but in other parts of uh, Catalonia. Now, we were we kept receiving different uh, videos, uh, including the ones where uh, you can see uh, several police officers running away from the crowd as people were actually throwing stones at them. So police officers had to uh, get into their cars and drive away. At the same time, there was also uh, quite an emotional video that was circulating online where it was possible to see Catalan police officers trying to protect citizens of Catalonia from National Guard. Now, there was another video where uh, you could see how difficult it is for some Catalan police officers to really uh, still fulfill their professional duties. There was a video of a police officer crying and trying to hide his face uh, while uh, a man from the crowd approached him uh, to support him and gave him a hug. Now, that was a very emotional video. Indeed, it was a very tough and a very difficult day for Catalonia. Now, the polling stations are closed. The uh, count of the votes has begun, and people here on the square are waiting for some outcome for the results. Yeah, truly bizarre scene surrounding this example of European democracy. With the latest there, many thanks, Medina Kochova.